What you need to practice. Islam is based on five primary foundations, or pillars. Just as a building would lack stability without solid pillars, your relationship with God will lack focus and a secure connection without the observance of and adherence to these five fundamental pillars. These five pillars, or religious duties, are mandatory. You must follow and enact them with utmost devotion. Failure to comply and enact any of these dictates can lead to the commission of grave sins, some resulting in the expulsion of a believer from the fold and faith of Islam. Like the Ten Commandments, these pillars provide a spiritual foundation and framework to facilitate your life. Fulfilling these five pillars provides blessings and rewards for you in this life and the next. These pillars help you establish a closer relationship with your Creator and build a spiritual connection with Him. You must prioritize these pillars over all worldly matters, principles, or regulations in your life, as they form the foundation and starting point for all other good deeds and acts of worship to your Creator. These five pillars are mentioned individually throughout the Holy Quran and through narrations of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, known as Hadith. The five pillars of Islam are Testimony of faith in the oneness of God, Allah, and the last and final prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him. The first pillar, the declaration and testimony of faith, ranks as the first of the vital integral pillars. The remaining principles relate to putting faith in action, as you must apply your faith in behavior and practice. The other four pillars are religious acts to be performed either daily, once a year, or at least once in a lifetime toward the attainment and accomplishment of faith. The word shahada in Arabic linguistically translates to mean testifying or bearing witness. The shahada is the Islamic creed. The shahada contains two parts that a Muslim must testify to and believe. The first part requires the believer to testify that there is no deity worthy of worship, veneration, or complete devotion other than Allah. A Muslim acknowledges that Allah has the exclusive right to be worshipped, venerated, loved inwardly and outwardly by one's heart, tongue, and limbs. Regretfully, many have regarded certain historical figures as their gods and deities, who are wrongfully worshipped and venerated, whether idols, superstitions, saints, ideologies, ways of life, or any authority figures, who claim to be divine or semi-divine, even though they are creations, with no power to bring any benefit or harm to anyone. But they have taken, besides him, gods which create nothing, while they are created and possess not for themselves any harm or benefit, and possess not power to cause life or death or resurrection. Quran, chapter 25, verse 3. One enters the fold of Islam by verbally stating these words, believing in them, acting on them, and living upon them. Merely saying these words verbally, without accompanying action, does not complete a Muslim. The second part of the testimony requires you to testify that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of God. In accepting Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the seal of the prophets, you affirm that his prophecy confirms and fulfills all previously revealed messages, beginning with those delivered by Prophet Adam, peace be upon him. You carry out the instruction given by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as commanded by God the Almighty. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, also serves as the best role model for humanity, one who proves his worth through his exemplary life. Muslims are encouraged to follow and emulate Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him's examples, manners, generosity, good habits, politeness, respect, gentleness, noble feelings, and way of life to the best of their ability, with an emphasis on Islam and the Holy Quran. There has certainly been, for you, in the Messenger of Allah, an excellent pattern for anyone whose hope is in Allah and the last day and who remembers Allah often. Quran, chapter 33, verse 21. These two phrases are the most frequently repeated words worldwide, as hundreds of millions of practicing Muslims iterate these words dozens of times throughout their day and throughout their prayers. It is recommended for a believer to recite them when they first rise in the morning and before going to bed. These words reflect and encompass every dimension of a Muslim's life. The Shahada, testimony of faith, 
is by far the essential aspect of Islam, as it affirms the belief in the oneness and uniqueness of Allah upon which the whole religion of Islam is built and all other beliefs hinge. It is the central belief that a Muslim adheres to for his entire life. Verbally stating these words and living by them is unquestionably a Muslim's most significant and most important duty. Unless you acknowledge this testimony, you cannot be a Muslim. Muslims strain to utter these words as their last spoken before departing this world, since whoever does so has been promised the destiny of God-given paradise. However, only the ones who lived and acted upon these words will be granted the ability to utter these blessed sentiments in the form of their final words. Establishment of the Five Mandatory Prayers The second pillar of Islam is the mandatory round of ritual prayers that must be performed five times daily. The Islamic method of prayer is a ritualized form of worship, which involves the recitation of verses from the Holy Quran and supplications to God, all while standing, bowing, and prostrating. This mandatory act of worship is called Salah in Arabic, and differs from merely praying or supplicating to God in an impulsive act, i.e. just speaking one's mind. Instead, the Salah prayers demand a formalized structure, in which one prays a certain way at specific times as demonstrated by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, drawing direct inspiration from Angel Gabriel, who learned from God himself. The Arabic word Salah, generally translated to mean prayer in English, is linguistically derived from the Arabic word meaning connection. This mode of prayer connects the servant with his creator. Salah is your way of establishing direct contact with God the Almighty. Salah represents the affirmation of servanthood and submission to your Creator's will. In Salah, you acknowledge your weakness and neediness by seeking and begging for God's guidance, mercy, grace, and forgiveness. Salah, the Islamic ritualized prayer, is one form of worship amongst many in this beautiful faith. However, Salah holds a special status in Islam because the act of prayer builds a relationship between you as a servant and your creator. Salah is considered the central pole of the religion of Islam. Whoever demolishes or denies this practice in their life also demolishes their religion. According to Islamic scholars, this is the only form of worship that, if neglected, would exclude the disobedient from the folds of Islam. When prayer time arrives, you are expected to discontinue your current activity and pray to connect with God, the most merciful, thereby refreshing your faith for your benefit. Prayer helps remind you as to why you are here and for what purpose. Prayers help direct your thoughts and actions away from sin, from that which is not beneficial. Prayers redirect your thoughts to the remembrance of God. God commands you to establish and perfect your prayer by praying properly with concentration and the utmost humility. You must work and practice to improve your prayer technique, which takes a lifetime commitment. You must engage in a lifelong effort to master this art of communication with your Creator. The ones who fall into a habitual routine of reciting their words without concentration and humility will miss the objective of prayer, thus not benefiting from their prayer as deeply as those who pray earnestly and with full concentration and mindfulness. Neglecting mandatory prayer is a grave sin in the Islamic faith. Allah, the Glorious, shares a dialogue in the Holy Quran in which the residents of paradise ask the people condemned to hellfire the reason for their condemnation and the condemned respond, They will say, We were not of those who prayed, nor did we used to feed the poor, and we used to indulge in vain talk with the vain talkers, and we used to deny the day of recompense until there came to us the certainty. Quran, chapter 74, verses 43 through 47. The state of your prayer record will be the first thing asked of each of us on the great day of judgment. If your prayers are in order, then everything else will fall into place. If your prayers are not in order, then you will be doomed. The Messenger of Allah stated, The first of man's deeds for which he will be called to account on the day of resurrection will be Salat. If it is found to be perfect, he will be safe and successful. But if it is incomplete, he will be unfortunate and a loser. At Termidi. 
Prayer should be directed only to God the Almighty, as he is the only one in complete control of everything, including man's destiny. He is all-powerful, all-wise, all-knowing, and all-hearing, can fulfill anyone's needs and remove all of man's pain and miseries. The Islamic prayer ritual expresses submission to God, showing humility, as well as the ultimate devotion toward and love of God. Praying to the Creator daily is the best way to build a personal connection with Him while seeking His guidance, blessings, and forgiveness. You must pray to God to gain spiritual strength and peace of mind and to strengthen your faith's foundation. You must take a break from your daily activities five times a day to connect with God, to stay mindful of Him in this world of stress, struggle, and distractions. The ritual of prayer reminds Muslims that Allah controls all things, a realization that allows you to put your worldly concerns into perspective. The Islamic prayer method and mode act as a spiritual diet. Just as the body requires food and water throughout the day, your spirit needs to partake in the remembrance and worship of God to stay spiritually healthy. Is not the soul more valuable than the body? When someone does you a favor or helps you, it's human nature to want to thank that individual for their aid. Since God has blessed you with countless favors, including your wealth, health, family, and gifts of all kinds, you must pray numerous times to thank him throughout your day and night. The best way to demonstrate gratitude is through the five daily prayers. Concern and almsgiving to the needy, zakat. Zakat is the third pillar of Islam. Zakat translates to mean the act of giving alms to the poor and needy. Offering zakat is a religious obligation for Muslims. In Islam, it is considered the duty of individuals of wealth to assist the poor and needy. The term zakat in Arabic linguistically carries several meanings, including to purify, to increase, cleanliness, blessings, and goodness. Zakat means to purify. According to the Islamic faith, your wealth and property are not pure unless you share a divinely appointed proportion of your earnings with people in need. The principle of zakat also purifies your heart of greed and selfishness. Whereas the humanistic love of wealth is natural, zakat is intended to free you from the excessive and all-consuming love of money and selfish desire, thereby teaching you self-discipline. Take, O Muhammad, from their wealth a charity by which you purify them and cause them increase, and invoke Allah's blessing upon them. Indeed, your invocations are reassurance for them, and Allah is hearing and knowing. Quran, chapter 9, verse 103. Zakat also translates to mean growth and blessings. If you give and help others in times of ease and difficulties, God will be pleased, increasing and blessing your wealth in response. Allah, the Glorious, has promised that if you spend your wealth in zakat, your prosperity will increase manyfold. The example of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is like a seed of grain, which grows seven spikes. In each spike is a hundred grains, and Allah multiplies his reward for whom he wills and Allah is all-encompassing and knowing. Quran, chapter 2, verse 261. Our prophet has stated that the act of charity does not decrease wealth. Instead, this act blesses, purifies, and ultimately increases one's fortune. Islam requires you to pay an annual contribution of 2.5% of your wealth and liquid assets you have accrued over one lunar year. Your personal zakat is calculated on your earned net balance that amount remaining after paying all other necessary expenses. Zakat is not an income tax. The amount due is based on what you have saved and held for an entire year. Zakat is not paid from the funds needed for debt repayment or necessary living expenses such as food, water, shelter, clothing, and transportation. It's important to note that zakat money needs to be given from an untainted pool of 100% pure and halal funds not taken from thefts or bribes, nor profits from interest-based loans or sales of alcohol, pork, drugs, or anything prohibited in Islam. God, the Almighty, is good and pure, and accepts only that which is good and pure.
fasting during the month of Ramadan for self-purification. Fasting during the month of Ramadan is the fourth pillar of Islam. The holy month of Ramadan is the ninth month in the Islamic lunar calendar and can last 29 or 30 days. Muslims fast by abstaining from eating, drinking, chewing gum, smoking, and partaking in any sexual activity from dawn until sunset. Fasting in Islam does not consist solely of refraining from food and drink. Instead, you abstain from evil, selfish desire, and wrongdoing. The purpose of fasting is not merely for the body. Instead, it's for the spirit as well. Fasting during Ramadan is for the benefit of your soul, mind, and body. You are commanded to refrain from gossiping, backbiting, slandering, lying, cheating, looking at material that is prohibited, nursing a grudge, using sinful speech, and any wrongdoing. You must adhere to the morals of Islam strictly during your fast, as failure to do so can violate your fast. Fasting during Ramadan is obligatory for every sane, healthy Muslim who is not ill nor traveling long distances, whether male or female, unless a female is on her menstruation cycle or experiencing post-childbirth bleeding. The primary reason Muslims fast is that God the Almighty has commanded us to do so in his last and final revelation, the Holy Quran. O oh, you who believe, fasting is prescribed to you as it was prescribed to those before you that ye may become righteous and hopefully learn self-restraint. Quran, chapter 2, verse 183. Fasting is an act of worship beloved by God. The holy month of Ramadan and the prescribed fasting is a gift and mercy to you sent down directly from the Almighty. God prescribes no rulings to his slaves unless they come complete with great wisdom and benefit. God, the Almighty, states the act of fasting and abstaining from what is prohibited will increase your taqwa, God-fearing piety, righteousness, mindfulness, and consciousness of God, where you are aware God is always watching. Fasting develops spiritual endurance and self-restraint, helping you control your anger, words, and actions. Fasting helps one to resist unlawful desires and wicked habits, which in turn serves to guard against evil. Fasting during Ramadan suppresses worldly desires and strengthens one's spirituality. The holy month of Ramadan is special and blessed because the Holy Quran, God's final book, was revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in this special month. Therefore, Muslims recite the Holy Quran frequently in this blessed month. During Ramadan, Muslims try to establish or re-establish a relationship with their creator, the pilgrimage to Mecca. The fifth pillar of Islam is Hajj, which translates to mean the pilgrimage to the holy city of Mecca. The Arabic word Hajj linguistically means heading to a place for the sake of visiting. In Islamic terminology, the term describes the act of heading to Mecca to observe specific actions and rituals. Hajj, or the pilgrimage, is a five to six day journey to this sacred place between the eighth and thirteenth day of the last month of the Islamic lunar calendar, Dhul Hijjah, the Hajj journey is obligatory for every Muslim, male or female, to complete at least once in a lifetime, provided they are mentally, physically, and financially capable of making the trip. God states, And do to Allah from the people is a pilgrimage to the house, for whoever is able to find thereto a way. Quran, chapter 3, verse 97. The Hajj includes detailed reenactments of certain symbolic rituals performed by great prophets and righteous individuals in the past. The Hajj pilgrimage and its symbolic rituals commemorate the legacy of Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him. This is why one needs to learn about Prophet Abraham to understand the reasoning behind individual acts performed as part of Hajj. Integral to Hajj is the Kaaba, a holy shrine a black silk-clad cube stone structure at the heart of the Grand Mosque in the modern-day city of Mecca in Saudi Arabia. The Kaaba is at the center of the earth, built by Prophet Abraham and his son Ishmael, peace be upon them. Upon completion, God the Almighty commanded Prophet Abraham to relay a single message to the people that they would be required to make a pilgrimage to this house. This has been how to convert to Islam and become Muslim. What you need to know, 
believe and practice after submitting to your creator. Written by The Sincere Seeker from The Sincere Seeker Collection. Narrated by Austin Van Fleet. Copyright 2023, The Sincere Seeker. All rights reserved. May your journey to the answer and the truth be pleasant and successful. The Sincere Seeker's introductory book to Islam, The Sacred Path to Islam, and other Islamic books for adults and children are available on The Sincere Seeker's Amazon page. Believe and practice after submitting to your creator. Written by The Sincere Seeker from The Sincere Seeker Collection. Narrated by Austin Van Fleet. Copyright 2023, The Sincere Seeker. All rights reserved. May your journey to the answer and the truth be pleasant and successful. The Sincere Seeker's introductory book to Islam, The Sacred Path to Islam, and other Islamic books for adults and children are available on The Sincere Seeker's Amazon page at www.amazon.com forward slash The Sincere Seeker. You are encouraged to visit and subscribe to The Sincere Seeker's blog at www.thesincereseeker.com and The Sincere Seeker's YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash C forward slash The Sincere Seeker. For questions or comments, please contact me at hello at thesincereseeker.com. Thank you for listening. At www.amazon.com forward slash The Sincere Seeker. You are encouraged to visit and subscribe to The Sincere Seeker's blog at www.thesincereseeker.com and The Sincere Seeker's YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash C forward slash The Sincere Seeker. For questions or comments, please contact me at hello at thesincereseeker.com. Thank you for listening.